Yes. That is right. I hinted at it in the last video. I had a company named Epic Bait Molds work with me and design an open pour two-piece aluminum mold. Obviously, this is something I would never be able to do myself. You need a pretty big, giant, expensive CNC machine to do this kind of stuff. Oh, we're he already heating up plastic and I forgot about it. Before this video starts, yes, this mold's for sale. Jason from Epic Bait Molds will be making a bunch of these. And if you have a soft plastic station like this, this is a fun one. They're on Instagram, they have a website, Everything's linked below, and I am amazed and grateful. Thank you, Jason and Amanda. I don't think they even know. Um, the master that I gave them to use to make this, like they can take a picture of it and render it into a program and make a and machine this, is like over two years old. It's just something I wasn't comfortable making a mold out of myself, but I gave to Jason, and he just... And this thing's amazing. You don't see very many open pours like this. Aluminum two-piece open pours. There aren't very many to begin with. Chris Jones just came out with one, World's Worst Fishing. That's a good one too. This one is segmented, three pieces, and it swims like a champ. I'm probably showing you action footage right now. And not only does it swim just with a straight retrieve like a champ, I think what's gonna make this thing killer is um, it. you jerk it, pause and goes, and it's erratic and random and very swimmy still. A lot of bend and essing in the body when you do that. I think that's what Epic Bait Molds and I are going to be going for when it comes to the design of these open pore swim baits, also injection baits. I think we're gonna cover it all. I think we're gonna make a lot of different kinds of molds together for soft plastic baits. We're hoping to make a bit of a dent in the soft plastic industry and the bait making industry and make stuff that's not normal. This one worked out. Let's pour some. Cheers. Starting out, I have this very translucent orange color. I'm gonna stir this up, get it past 350 and vacuum it to get all these bubbles out of it. So the plastic is still like 360 right now. I'm gonna heat this aluminum mold up just so we get a nice smooth pour with a heat gun. This one, I can set to whatever temperature I want. I have it at a thousand. And I can set the fan however I want to. It doesn't need to be hot, hot. Just gotta heat it up a little bit. You don't want a giant temperature difference. And I'm gonna pour it kind of quickly making sure I get plastic all the way to the top, everywhere. Then I'm gonna dump it out. But, I didn't dump all of it out. I left quite a bit in there, because I want the belly to be orange on this bait. But then the skin is gonna be pretty translucent to where I can add other colors behind the orange film. And it also has flakes in it. That's salmon colored flakes that are in there. Or no, those are orange. Pearl orange, pearl orange colored flakes, so. So next. I'm thinking a really bright white for the next layer will be good. Cause it's gonna, I, here I'll just tell you what I'm thinking completely. A bright white next, and then that transitioning into kind of this greenish pearlized, this is like mica powder green. Very gilly, very much like a bluegill is what this will look like. It is so easy to waste plastic doing this kind of soft plastic pouring. You just quickly pour like over four ounces when all you need is like one, you know? So when you're heating up your plastic, it, co it goes from that milky white stuff to like a gel and globs fall off and it, it kind of wants to stick together still to just another, almost that consistency again, but it's clear. And you gotta get it past 350 degrees. This is about 300 degrees, and it's very bubbly because I've been stirring it too much, but I don't care because I have a vacuum. I'll get it to 350 and show you. Okay, here we got, oh, oh. Uh, we have passed 350. This is what 400 looks like, um, but it's okay because this is dead on plastics. Best plastic you can get. Never burns, even if you're a moron. It's all bubbly though. You can definitely see all of those bubbles. You gotta get rid of those. 
Actually, let's do this right. I need to add the color first. And we're going for white. Ooh, that's like a nice translucent white still. I could add some flake. Um, let's see, there's already orange. What else is in a bluegill? Blue. That's better. It's still well above, sorry. The plastic is still well above 350, so safe to vacuum still. You have to heat an aluminum mold bait up more than a silicone mold. That aluminum sucks the heat out of there wherever you want it, so this requires a lot of heat. You're gonna be blowing smoke everywhere. One thing about this mold though, is that those segments separate things and it's kind of cool. Like I did not get any of that white in the tail back here. You can see it's still orange. And I got a lot of it, well I got all of it, just up in these first two segments. But then we're gonna transition to this color and that tail piece is gonna be darker than the front body. I don't know, I just think that's kinda cool. Starting in that tail, because it's the thinnest part, and yes, you can just glob it on like that. It almost works better when you just glob it on like that. It's good to start on the thin stuff. That can be cut off very easily. Just some finishing touches and hitting the sides with a torch. Getting that heat to get to the plastic melts everything together nicely. It's so the edge up here like the plastic melts all the way to the aluminum edge. This might not have needed that, but I just kind of hit it with a torch now anyway, just to make sure. Okay, just got off the phone with my brother. Talked for like half an hour, so this is definitely cooled off, even though it's still warm to the touch. The inside of this is definitely cooled off, and we're gonna unveil our creation. I should just say demold our creation. These are nice too, because you can just open them instead of having to rip something out. If you're not into swim baits or fishing with big baits, doesn't that just make you want to fish with big baits? Look at that. It's like a cross between a worm and a big swim bait and something jointed and it's weedless. You rig these on an 8 aught beast hook. I have found that an 8 aught beast hook accepts this bait best. Absolutely stunning. Let's make one more. Gonna do something kind of different with this one. I have this nice deep orangish red color. I'm gonna fill the whole mold up with just it. Probably clamp this bad boy. I missed a little spot in the tail back there so I blasted it with the heat gun and added more while I was blasting it with the heat gun. You get the worst, your number one enemy with aluminum molds like this is cold cracking. And it's when you get a section that comes up on the aluminum but you let it sit there for too long. And then it hardened right there on the aluminum. And then you come back over it with more plastic and you don't get a good bond. And then you can see the visible line where that happened on the outside of the bait. That's what cold cracking is. You don't want that. Okay, the mold. It's sufficiently cooled off. It's still pretty hot. It's kind of hurts my hand. And voila, the bait's done, just kidding. I'm gonna cut the head off, I'm gonna cut that fin off, and the tail fin, and put it back in the mold. You get where I'm going? You get it? You can't just go lopping the head off like a butcher though. You gotta kinda, I wanna cut to the shape of the gill. So I'm gonna get real close up to that gill plate and make the first cut, and then trim it. Just taking away the plastic along the edge of that gill plate. Oops. Okay, this isn't going to be super clean because I just screwed it up a little bit. Didn't realize how sharp these scissors are. There we go. And then just put it back in the mold right where it was.
So for the entire rest of the body of this bait, I'm thinking I just want it to be black. That will probably look best. You know what? Never mind. Sparkly black. There we go. Here we go. I hope you saw my technique there, because I'm going to have a hard time explaining it. Don't be hot. Don't be hot. Thank you. Woo! I was like having the heat gun. So I was just having the plastic right there and ready. I poured it over here, but it slowly came up over there. And then I put the heat gun on the plastic up at the head, and then just started pouring hardcore over here until it started hitting that heated plastic. Then I took the heat gun off, and it instantly got up there. Does that make sense? It's kind of overkill to do that because I'm going to hit this with the propane torch again and it's all going to melt into itself and be one thing. I hope that makes sense. Oh, oh I'm spitting propane. Oh dear. Hope I didn't overdo it with the heat right there. I don't know what overdoing it with the heat would look like, but I don't want to find out. Okay. It's got to be ready. Yep. That looks very bonded. A lot of flashing to clean off because I was messy, but let's do, I'm going to do that and show you this bait. One sec. There we go. That is how you bond a completely already set up color to a dark one. That worked out really good. Even on the fins back here, like you can tell it really mixed. It's really on there. I'm thinking now, I'm gonna take these two and tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be cold. Back into the 30s. Why, God? Why'd you do that? I'm gonna hit the creeks, gonna hit the ponds, the lakes, I don't know. Rivers, I'll go to the river with these. I'm gonna hit spots, show more action, get more action video, show ways to rig these things, you know. Give you the good rundown on everything. Present the chance of catching a fish. Seems about all I can muster anymore on this channel. Well, it's just this time of the year. See you then. It is a cold, miserable day today. 32. Got some swim baits, got three swim baits. Should probably show you how I rigged them. I have the bait on an 8 ot beast hook, but then I put a uh, stinger treble off the bottom of the beast hook. There's a better way of doing that using like wired and crimps and stuff and making it much more secure but uh haven't lost one yet i probably will eventually and then i'll do it differently but till then that's just a way of doing it I'll be real with you guys. I got cold. I just couldn't handle it. 32 degrees, you know, standing on the bank. I think it was about 15 mile per hour winds, pretty gusty. Getting hit with that lake water. <laughs> Casting that bait caster, getting sprayed in the face every cast. No thank you. I do hope I got a little bit more decent action footage from that, but whatever. More on this bait is to come. I just have so much fishing to do this year. Molds to make, designs to test out. What a life. If you wanna get you one of these, I don't know what the availability of these is gonna be like. Um, I think Jason said he has material for 60. I hope I'm not wrong on that and I'm not. <laughs> I need to confirm these sorts of things before I just go blurting them out on video. But if you want one, links in the description, they are available now. I hope that you can get one if you want one. I think the MSRP is like 150 so pretty standard aluminum mold prices when it comes to things milled this nicely and there's this much detail in them and they're this precise and you know chamfered edges and everything's surfaced completely flat pretty much see yourself in the things it's not they're nice it's done well and they'll last you a lifetime so 
That's a plus. 32. What is today? This was March 20th. Jason and Amanda live in Alabama. Isn't that cool? It's probably 80 right there right now. I should move there. <laughs> I'm gonna come bunk with you guys, okay? Enjoy the mold, guys. On to the next bait that's sitting right there. On to the next bait. I'm not even gonna show you guys. On to the next bait.